Hi everyone. So I wanted to do this little tutorial. Um, I had a few people ask me about booleans and you know how, how to best work with a boolean and do different uh, objects with holes in them. So we'll do a little boolean discussion with uh, a revolver, a, cil a revolver cylinder, so one of these um, right here, which looks great. So we're going to follow this example and recreate this in 3D Studio Max, trying to use as simple tools as possible. So the first thing I'm going to use is I'm going to, this is a deep, uh, 3D Studio Max default layout. I'm going to create a cylinder by going into the Create panel, Geometry, Cylinder. I'm going to left click and drag to create my cylinder, let go, and then move my mouse up and down to create the height, and then left click when I'm done. That's it. Right click to finish so you get out of cylinder mode, and you can move your cylinder into whatever position you want, but this works perfectly fine right now. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to create a second cylinder. Left click and drag, let go, move your mouse, and left click when complete. You can use the scale tool, which is R on your keyboard, or move, rotate, scale up here, um, R on your keyboard, and scale it so it pops out of both sides, like that. I'm going to hit maximize viewport here, or, or Alt W on the keyboard, and rotate around to see what it looks like so far. You can hit G to turn off the grid if you don't like the grid being there. Um, there you go. So this looks okay so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my front view and then I'm going to move this little cylinder upwards, just about right there. I'm trying to get the look of uh, the top cylinder here. Now, right there. Don't worry about the size. We can adjust the size. Everything's adjustable. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna check the poly counts by hitting F4. We're gonna see what the wireframes look like. So this looks okay like that, great. And then this cylinder looks good, but what I want to do to this cylinder is I'm actually going to add a couple of cap segments like that. So this is my cylinder here, and this is the big cylinder. Okay, so this is where the bullets will go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click, convert to edit poly, and right click, convert to edit poly. What I'm going to do with this cylinder now is I'm going to hit insert on the keyboard, so the insert key. Okay. And I'm going to move this pivot point to the middle of the big cylinder, like that. And then hit the insert key when I'm complete. Because now that I've done that, I can then rotate and it does this, which is exactly what we want to do. Because right now we want to go to tools and we're going to use the array tool um, to copy this object, but follow specific parameters. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do preview and we're going to increment, rotate on the Z axis. And you can left click and drag on these little arrows to change the numbers and just make sure it overlaps itself like that. And now we can change the count of how many are being created by going down to count and you can change it to five, six, or however many you want. And then just rotate by whatever degrees means overlapping. So that's if you want five holes, if you want six holes, you know, something like that. And it's all evenly spaced out and great. What we want to do here is make sure that all the type of objects are set to reference and then click OK. Because what's going to happen there is now if we edit one of them by going to our control panel here and going to modify, going to edit poly, go to vertex, if we modify one, it modifies all of them which allows us to adjust the spacing like that, which is great. We want these cylinders to pop in and out of both sides. This looks great just like that. Cool. We also want a tiny cylinder in the middle. So what I'll end up doing is I'm just gonna create a small cylinder in the middle, about that big, and create the length, width, and height, and poke it through like that. And you can adjust the scale of this, of course, any way you want like this. There we go. Cool. We're not done yet because now we want to do these little curved bits um, to get that nice big detail in there. Um, and all this will use the Boolean tool. So all we're doing is making things to cut in and out different shapes. So now we're going to use uh, not create geometry, not a standard primitive, a extended primitive. We're going to look at a shape called oil tank. And we're going to go into our uh, front menu here. So we're going to look at this perspective at the same time. Left click and drag. Let go of left click. Move your mouse. 
left click, and then you're able to create the curved surface now, like that. And we have this nice looking oil tank thing. And we can put them in between our bullets like that. And you can scale, you can adjust, you can do everything. You can increase the polygon counts as much as you want to. Um, right now, I'm not too concerned about polygon counts. We can actually go in, increase the sides like 24, increase our height segments. Um, this cylinder here, we locked it in and turned into an edit poly like that. That's great. Um, but if you want a more detailed cylinder, you can go in and uh, recreate the cylinder shape at a higher polygon count if you'd like. So let's say I go in here, I'll overlap this, delete that one. So this will be my new cylinder shape like that. Um, okay, perfect. And what I'll do here is I'll increase the polygon count a little bit. Those sides will be like, let's say 36. Uh, and that looks pretty good. And I'll change this color to yellow so it makes it a little bit easier to see by clicking here, changing the color. Cool, so this looks great, it has a nice shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the insert key and move this pivot point to the center of the circle again, center of the cylinder, right there. And hit insert one more time. The reason why I'm doing that again is the same thing. We go to tools, we go to array, and then we're going to use the rotation uh, to rotate around this model again. I'm gonna hit preview. And look at that, it's already actually set up in the exact positions we want. And then you can, if it's not the positions exactly that you want, you can change the rotation here, rotate on the Z axis, you can change the count and you can change whether or not it's a reference or not. And then hit okay once, once you're complete. Now that you have this general shape, now what we wanna do is go to Boolean mode. So to go to Boolean mode, we go into our uh, create menu. We're in our geometry menu. We click on standard primitives and we go to compound objects. Once you're in compound objects, you can go to Boolean. And what that does is it automatically adds the object you currently have selected uh, as the first main object. So this is my big cylinder, make sure that's selected and then hit Boolean. And that'll be the first operand it makes. So the operand is just like a mesh uh, that you're adding to this, the series list. And you can add all of them. So let's start with these uh, chambers here. There you go. I added all six chambers. There's another extra one there. That's okay. We can just move it or delete it or do whatever we want. There you go. I can delete that. We go back to the modify panel and there it is. So we have all our cylinders. You can hide and unhide them if you want. And I need to make sure this one's popping out a little bit. There you go. So you can hide and unhide these cylinders and you can also change their types. So you can hold Control and left click to select more. Hold shift and left click to select the list. Um, and we have cylinder 10, which is our big cylinder right here. You can hide it to see that it's correct. And all these that we've added are the chambers. So we need to change what mode they're set in. Currently using Boolean, they're all set to union mode. What we want to do is set them to subtract. We want to take away. And now you see, you get that cool chambered look of your cylinder right there. And uh, the great thing about uh, using Boolean here is that we can keep adding and changing uh, object modes all the time. So let's say I wanna make you know the outer edges like this in the chamber as well. Um, I will add operands and then add these oil tanks. And then there's the leftover one here. And you can see they're actually automatically set to the last mode that you use, which is subtract. And now we have a cool chamber look. I'll turn this gray by clicking the color box here. I'm changing the color to a gray tone. So we can see it much better there. And that looks pretty good. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one more operand like that, which will subtract the middle bit like that. And that made a cool cylinder. Once you're done all that, you can right click on the object itself and convert it to an editable poly. And this will make it a workable mesh. Now the issue is our wireframe looks like trash right now. You cannot have edges that go nowhere. Uh, that's improper edge loops. Uh, if you're gonna animate this or destroy it or texture it or something, it's gonna be a nightmare. Uh, let's do a quick render to see how it looks. That looks great. Um, wh so what we need to do is we need to retopo. Now luckily in 3D Studio Max 2022, there are a new retopo tools that are really great. 
So we're going to go to our modifier list and we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to retopology. And you can choose whatever polygon count you're looking for, 2,000, 5,000. It doesn't even matter because you can actually keep changing it. And I'm just going to do 5,000 and compute. And it's going to take a second to load. And then once it's done loading, you can see our mesh here. And then if I hit F4, so we see the wireframe. Look at that beautiful wireframe we got in our mesh. And we can also try it at 2,000 and see what it looks like. 2,000, compute. So if we're making a low poly gun, you see 2,000 is not that great. So maybe we'll go to 3,000. There is some adjustments. And of course, you can retopo or retopo, right? So if we stick it to 5,000 or 4,000, you know, this is at 3,000. 3,000 is actually not that bad at all. There's a little deformation there. So actually, what I might end up doing is go 5,000, compute, and then see what it does. So at 5,000, it doesn't look too bad. Then I'm going to collapse into an edit poly. And then I can do another retopo. I go back and retopo again. I don't like 5,000. I want to try 2,000 again. And now that it already has a lower uh, base mesh, you can see that 2,000 actually came out really well. So there's a lot of little adjustments you can make. And you can see we have to adjust smoothing groups still here. But to create an object with holes in it that looks really good, um, it doesn't take too much effort anymore with the new retopology tools. Um, cause we can just go in now and because the topology looks good, we can actually go in and clean it up a bit too. Right? So never consider your model completely finished until you do a little bit of cleanup, right? It's not, this isn't like the best way to work. What you're going to want to do afterwards is do some edge cleanup. So usually what I end up doing, especially if a model looks similar all the way through on one part, like all this, uh, right now, if I hit seven on the keyboard, we're at 11,000 polys. Um, you know, we did convert this to, uh, there's a lot of like leftover objects here. I'll delete them. So we're at about, sorry, 5,000 polys right here. I'm going to grab this edge loop by double clicking it. Double clicking will grab an edge loop. I hold control and double click another edge loop, another edge loop. Uh, sorry, I'm clicking the wrong things. There you go, another edge loop. And these edge loops aren't really being used at all. So I can just hold control and backspace and I just saved myself 500 polys. Right there, no changes, nothing bad happened. I saved myself 500 polys and I can continue working. I made a cool revolver cylinder just like that. I'll put it on high quality here. And uh, yeah, it's ready to be UV'd and do everything to it. So that's how you make a revolver cylinder using uh, Boolean tools. And uh, yeah, I hope it, you find it really helpful. Um, I find that a lot of people tend to freak out over making holes in their models. Uh, especially when they're or inorganic models. But nowadays, it's a lot easier to do that because you're given so many tools um, to kind of play with. And now we can shrink and scale you know, all this as much as we want. And don't forget the inside edges, too. You can actually wipe a lot of these, too, as well. Like, you can grab loop, 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 loop. And we could probably save a ton of polys. Like, just this one loop right here. Watch this, 4,700, 4,300. I say 400 polys. If I keep doing this, we're gonna reduce the uh, the loop types all around. Um, yeah, and if you want to select, if you want to select multiple rings, um, sorry, I didn't demonstrate this yet uh, to a lot of people, but this actually might be super handy for a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, if you need to select lots of different rings to remove, hold Control. So go to edge mode, double click an edge that you want. And if there's multiple edges nearby, hold control and click ring and the down arrow. See that? I'm holding control and it's selecting every loop beside itself. Watch this, double click, hold control. Oop, wrong way, whoops. Up arrow on this one, okay. Done. Nice clean poly, still looking great. And look, we're reducing that polygon count so much. And I'm going to keep it going and uh, just keep wiping this out so you can see it. In fact, I could probably do this one, hold control, double click, hold control, double click, hold control, ring up. Oh, two of them are not in the same ring. That's okay. What I'll do is ring up, ring down. There you go.
I'll deselect this one, deselect that one. There we go. And uh, a big portion of 3D modeling that I think a lot of people underestimate is just clean up. Like just cleaning up your models. Look at that. We're down to 2,500. All we did was clean up a little bit. And we could probably even clean up a whole bunch here too. If I go here, 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 here. Look at that. Didn't even, barely even change our model. I didn't even think it changed at all. We're at now 1,900. We could probably go in and clean up like a whole row here, but this looks good. I like this. I could probably clean up this one. Uh, and this one. There we go. Barely a change in our model. 1,800 polys creating a good revolver uh, cylinder right here. And then you can add in more details as you see fit. But I hope that was helpful for everyone. Little revolver cylinder right here using the Boolean tool, using the uh, array tool, super helpful. And uh, if you want to create different objects that way, it's a really amazing tool. Thank you very much. Hope you like that. Check out my other videos. Subscribe if you can. I'll be releasing more tutorials and uh, more anime tutorials coming forward too. So look forward to that. Bye-bye.